Hello again, this is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series. <clears throat> this is video 2A, Introduction to Two-Dimensional Vectors. Now we already know that a vector is any quantity that has a magnitude and a direction. Magnitude is effectively how much of whatever the vector is representing could be how far, could be how fast, uh, how fast the velocity is changing in the case of acceleration. Uh, again, it consists of a number with appropriate units. We're familiar with that already. <clears throat> in one dimensional motion, we only had two options for the direction. So we differentiated one from the other using a positive or a negative sign, as you'll recall. When we have two-dimensional motion or planar motion, we have a lot more options for the direction. So how the direction is displayed can be accomplished a few different ways. That's going to be the focus of our discussion here. So the constraints on two-dimensional motion are that the object must stay in the plane. You remember the train tracks for one-dimensional motion. Uh, in two dimensions, think of uh, your desk surface. And think of a bug that's on the desk. Uh, the bug can move in any conceivable direction on the desk, but it can't come up off the surface. So here's a two-dimensional plane viewed from above. You can uh, consider this an XY plane. And we're going to consider an object that starts at the origin here and it moves some distance in some direction that's indicated by the blue arrow. Okay, we're going to call this uh, vector A, capital A in this case. We need to be able to indicate the distance and the direction to properly describe this vector. One of the ways we can do it, at least <clears throat> to indicate the direction, is to reference the compass points like on a map. So we're familiar with north, south, west, and east. Uh, we're going to measure the angle shortly. When we do, uh, we could conceivably call the direction some particular angle to the north of east. So here's east, and we go some measured angle towards the north. Or we could also refer to it as some different angle to the east of north. Okay, you might, here's the north, and then to the east of north. We might uh, <clears throat> recognize that these two angles are complementary. That'll come in handy a little later on. We can also use what are called the mathematical axes. Uh, in the mathematical axes system, angles are measured counterclockwise this way from the positive x direction to the east. So our angles are measured this way. Um, you can see that the, the mathematical axes range from 0 degrees, which is to the east, all the way around back to 360 degrees, which is also to the east. You can see that the compass directions we're familiar with, north is 90 degrees measured counterclockwise from east. West is 180 degrees, again measured counterclockwise. South is 270. All right. You may also recall the numbered quadrants. For some reason they always use Roman numerals for these. One, two, three, four, and you'll note that they follow the mathematical axis system. Now we need to thoroughly describe this vector, <clears throat> so we need its magnitude and its direction. We're going to measure the magnitude directly, use a ruler, and just measure the length of the vector from the origin to the tip of the arrow. Depending on how the printer interpreted the PDF file, your measurement may be slightly different. Okay, mine was seven centimeters. So we know the magnitude of the vector 
and now we're going to report its direction. Take your protractor and place it such that the origin of the vector, or the origin of the xy plane, is at the origin of the protractor. So this is what we call the origin of the protractor in the middle. <clears throat> Depending on how your protractor is marked, you want to use the angles that conform to the mathematical axis system. If you look here, the inner ring of numbers. Here's my zero degrees, and then 10, 20, 30, 40, up to 90 at north. This inner ring are the mathematical axes on this protractor. <clears throat> now this particular vector has a mathematical angle that lines up with 30 degrees in the mathematical set of axes. We would then describe this vector magnitude at mathematical angle. We know the magnitude is 7 centimeters and the mathematical angle is 30 degrees. When we list the magnitude at the mathematical angle, this is what's called standard vector notation. We could also use the compass points. We could say that it's 7 centimeters at 30 degrees north of east. We could also describe it as 7 centimeters at 60 degrees east of north. Okay, now, vector A was easy because it was in quadrant 1. <clears throat> what if it's in quadrant 3 or 4? So we'll consider vector B. This purple one here. In order to measure the angle properly, you got to flip the protractor over and measure the angle down from the negative x-axis and then add 180 degrees, which is represented by the top half here. So if we're going to measure this angle in the mathematical system from zero, we've got 180 degrees here and then plus whatever this measurement is. So we can see here that the angle is 73 degrees. We add 180 and we get a mathematical angle for vector B of 253 degrees. Once again, we could describe it as 73 degrees south of west or 17 degrees west of south. What you want to be able to do is move freely through the various measurement systems for the direction of any vector. Given a mathematical angle, you should be able to describe the same direction in terms of the relationship to the compass points and vice versa. Okay? So that will do it for the introduction to vectors. Next up is uh, graphical addition of vectors. Until then, I'll see you soon.